welcome to worship here at Kilrenny. And no matter who you are, where you've come from, how often you've been here or how few times you've been here, it's great to see all of you. And welcome to those of you who are watching us later on uh, online. A few intimations. Um, Saturday 20th of May, uh, Lukers St. Athenes and uh, Tapor have an open day. Uh, if you'd like to go and visit the uh, St. Athenes Church and have a tour around it, there will be some guided tours, a plant sale and tea and coffee. That's between 1 and 4 o'clock on the 20th of May. So if that's something you'd like to do then uh, I'm sure you'd be very welcome there. K2, the youth worker, uh, youth organisation based in this, this part of the world, have a list of prayer activities. I'm not going to go through them all, that's the sheet, but I will bring it through to the hall later. If anyone's interested, please uh, take a few moments to read it. There may be something there that may be of uh, value or of interest to you. K2, as you know, is going into schools and working with our young people in uh, East Newton and North East Fife. And one of the things they need a lot of is support through prayer. And I know from when I was involved with growing the Rothis that knowing you have a group of people praying for you really does give you a lift and a support for the work you do. So if you're interested, if you'd like to know more, then I'll bring the sheet through with me and it'll be in the church hall afterwards. So please feel free to read it, pass it on, uh, get involved in whatever way you can. Um, you'll see it on the information sheet mention of Krishnavi. It's between the 14th and 20th of May. Leslie and the Cain will have much more in the way of details for you. But I just want to highlight to you those dates so that you, you have that awareness. Next Sunday morning, you have a long lie. Now that, of course, is bless our new King Charles, having his coronation on Saturday, you have your celebrations on the Saturday night. Long lie Sunday morning, 11 o'clock service here. Then uh, a, 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 I keep wanting to say soup and sandwich, and it's not soup and sandwich. It's not soup and sandwich. It's sandwich and cake. So, a celebration lunch uh, in the church hall at 12 o'clock afterwards. As I said last week, if only Buckingham Palace had got in touch with me, we could have coordinated diaries, and I wouldn't have gone and hopped that. I would have gone on holiday anyway, but that's another story. Uh, but we could, have, we could have worked something out on the dates. I won't be here, unfortunately, but you're going to be led by the worship team next Sunday, who I know are going to do a wonderful job anyway. So please enjoy that, enjoy the celebrations. I will be in Englandshire at that point in time. Um, so um, no doubt we'll all be raising a glass and going, God bless you, good King Charles. So that's next Sunday, 11 o'clock. Have a set here to late start. Uh, tea and coffee this morning after the service. Please come and join us. Uh, especially if you're a visitor, please come and uh, make yourself known to us and uh, enjoy a chat and a cup of tea or coffee. I take this morning's call to worship from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God, that God has made us and we are His. We are God's people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His course with praise. Give thanks to God and bless His name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Let's sing from the hymn, hymn number 63, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. Hymn 63. <laughs>
God in prayer. Let us pray. From the moment we awake to face the day ahead, you are with us. Through good times and bad, your presence enough for our needs. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever. Through the hours of the day in our travels and work, you are with us. In decisions we make, your wisdom enough for our needs. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever. As we lay down to rest at the end of the day, you are with us. As we lay our fair fears at your feet, your peace enough for our needs. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever. Lord God, your love for humankind, present in the beginning of all, in the beginning of all things, extends through history and touches even my life. Your love sees failings and forgives. Your love feels pain and wipes away our tears. Your love knows grief and comforts the sorrowful. Your love sees sin and still loves the sinner. Forgive us when we fail to live lives that reflect your love. Forgive us the many times when we take for granted all that you have done for us. Transform us through your Spirit and empower us to serve you this day and all days. And now we join our voices together with believers around the world in the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is one of those lovely hymns for the beauty of the earth. And you may be saying, we've all said it this morning, oh, it's a bit dreary, isn't it? It's a bit dull. But remember, good folk of the East New, that this is just a contrast before your beautiful summer that you're going to have all summer long. So embrace the grey of the day and think of the beauty of the earth. Hymn 181, for the beauty of the earth, 181.
chapter 2, reading verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their houses and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Let's sing again from the hymn book number 549, How Deep the Father's Love for Us, 549.
Today's second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, reading verses 1 to 16. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep fall because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find a pastor. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am a good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Thank you, David. As we bring our prayers for peace today, let us remember the people of Sudan. We've seen the pictures in the last week or so. The devastation and desperation to leave a conflict zone. So please hold them in your prayers as we do so many other conflicts <coughs> around the world. Today's prayer for peace comes from the American website Social Justice Resource Centre. And they state that their mission is to link faith to action by providing information resources on social issues of our day. Let us pray. O loving God, we so often and for so, and for so long hear the guns and rockets, drones and bombs, and we see the pictures of death. Wrap all and each of these your people in your love. Let them hear, come to me who suffer and are burdened, and I will give you rest. In the last few months we have heard of the weapons and seen the blood of mass shootings and gang violence in many places. Wrap all and each of these your people in your love. Let them hear, come to me you who suffer and are burdened, and I will give you rest. The bombs are exploding again in war zones around the world. Wrap all and each of these your people in your love. Let them hear, come to me you who suffer and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Violence continues, hidden in so many homes and families around the world, and in the abuse of innocent children. Wrap all and each of these your people in your love. Let them hear, come to me, you who suffer, 
and abundant, and I will give you rest. In so many parts of the world today, the air is tense with waiting, uncertainty, insecurity. From ravaged lands destroyed by war, your people lift their hands to you. We pray for stillness, for justice and for peace to come and to last. But we fear that they will not. Wrap all and each of these your people in your love. Let them hear. Come to me, you who suffer and are burdened, and I will give you rest. O God, our Maker, God of Abraham and Sarah, from which three great religions stand, we pray for peace. We pray for peaceful existence between Israelites and Palestinians, Sunnis and Shiites, Muslims, Jews and Christians. We pray for negotiations which can reach the roots of historical conflicts. We pray for a commitment to human rights by all sides and the protection of all lives. We pray for effective international intervention to ensure justice for all sides. We pray, pray for humanitarian aid and rebuilding where destruction has occurred. We pray for peace and for justice in our homes and on our streets. We pray for an end to violence, war and death. Grant us this peaceful God. Grant us a peaceful world. Amen. Our next hymn is the Lord's My Shepherd, but not the version we're used to. So, this is from Stuart Town End, who's hymn with some a few moments ago as well. And you put it on your offer of service, the words are there, and David's going to play the whole thing through once so you get a sense of how it goes and then we'll stand and sing it together. So it's the Lord's My Shepherd, it's on the intimation sheet and we'll let David play it through once.
tired of repeating it. The great thing of having an organist is you can try new tunes. And David came in this morning with a bit of a panic saying, the machine doesn't have the tune you're looking for. So if, if you're wanting the Lord's My Shepherd and David's not here, we're going to be stuck. <laughs> so thank you, David, for that. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Amen. Seeing Jesus as a good shepherd is a common enough metaphor within the church theology. But in a reading from John's Gospel, he does not just present himself as a kindly shepherd. He also condemns those who came before him. As we think about each element of this story, it's important for us to put aside the peaceful pastoral images of sheep grazing, grazing in green fields and our modern notions of shepherding. We must also reverse our uh, idea, our understanding of the role of the shepherd. <coughs> there were no sheepdogs running around to round the sheep up in ancient times. No cord bikes to race across the fields on. Everything was done on foot and in person. Helga, I'm coming to you in a moment. Helga can tell us later about being a shepherd. <laughs> being a she shepherd in the ancient Near East meant a life of isolation most of the time. A life of wandering, a life of hardship. Grazing was hard to find, as was water in the semi-desert hillsides. This was no part-time job. This was full-on, 24-7, a whole lifestyle. If you were truly committed to it, this is all you did. Now, I am not saying that being a shepherd in the 21st century is an easy life. So please, help out, forgive me. But I hope you've never had to chase the rules out of your sheep pen at any time or snakes away from your sheep either. Hopefully these are particular challenges we don't face in this part of the world. But it was a tough life. A shepherd was not someone highly regarded in the ancient world. The shepherds led their flock. They didn't go from behind they led from the front. And this is one of the things that Jesus captures for us. It meant that the sheep had to recognize the voice of their shepherd. And if you can imagine a hillside with a number of different flocks, a number of shepherds rounding up their sheep at various points in time, each sheep needed to know whose flock they belonged to, which flock they belonged to, and whose voice to follow. So in identifying himself as a shepherd, Jesus was aligning himself with those people who were lowly, poorly regarded, but inspired loyalty. Jesus was also aligning himself with Israel's greatest king. Remember the story of David, Samuel anointed him after he came in from the fields, the boy shepherd. Samuel had been sent to find his uh, king to replace Saul and had seen all the great men of Jesse's family, the young men looking sturdy, looking strong. They'd come before Saul and Samuel and yet God had said, that's not the one I'm after. That's not the one I'm looking for. Samuel eventually said to Jesse, do you have any more sons? He said, well, the boy's out looking after the sheep. So we'll bring him here. There was the boy. If we had children this morning, I had a story about David, the smallest, the teeny weeny king he was called. And that was it. This little boy came in from the field, no doubt in rags because he'd been out all day dusty. And God said, there's my king. There's the one I want. There's the one whose heart is in the right place. Jesus aligned himself to greatest, Israel's greatest king by saying, I will be your shepherd. And of course, there were many other things 
that aligned as well around Bethlehem and all the rest. But it was the young David, the smallest, the weakest, the youngest, who heard what Goliath challenged the Israelites to the fight. And unlike all the rest, this boy turned around and said, I'll take him on. I'll show you how it's done. Having fought lions and bears that had attempted to take sheep from his father's flock, David was not frightened of the giant. This was the courage that Jesus was saying the shepherd had and that he had for his people, the flock of Israel. This is the care of the shepherd who sleeps on the threshold of the sheep pen in order to ensure that sheep don't leave during the night and no one enters. Imagine if you will, and I'm sure Hell has done this on many occasions, of having to sleep with your animals and make sure they're all right, especially having just come out of lambing. It is a full-on commitment. Most of us, thankfully, don't have to stay at our work all night long and all day long and all the next night and all the next day. But shepherds do. Shepherds did. They literally were with their animals all the time. How else did the sheep get to know their voice? Nothing could get to them except through the shepherd. And the shepherd <coughs> let them escape. So in making the distinction between the shepherd who cared for the flock and the hired hand who just did a job. Jesus contrasting those who led the people of Israel in faith, like David and Moses before him, and those who'd only sought to benefit themselves. As soon as the trouble had come their way, they had gone. They had packed up all the treasure and left. Jesus, on the other hand, was going to stay the course for the people of Israel. He was going to be there for his people. He was going to provide the guidance of the Good Shepherd. Something I've been talking about in recent months when we were going through the book of Exodus and the story of Moses. Moses, the reluctant leader, was this idea of leadership. Leadership that's not necessarily from the most promising prospects. Moses kept asking God, why have you picked me? I can't speak. I'm not good at this. Moses kept giving God reasons for not picking him as the leader. And yet God still insisted. God said, no, you're the one. You're the one who will lead my people. The shepherd, likewise, was rarely seen as someone who had leadership potential within Jewish society. But Jesus was invoking the Holy Shepherd as the godly ideal of a leader. Someone who led from the front. There's no one entrusted by his flock. To be such a leader requires a trust and love of those who follow. When Jesus called the disciples, they left everything behind them and followed their leader. When Jesus brought Jairus, his daughter, back to life, he called her by her name. The followers of Jesus recognized his voice and responded. They responded positively to his call. This is leadership of a different kind from that that the world was used to. A form of leadership that requests devotion rather than demanding it. A form of leadership that looks to lead with humility rather than dominating through fear. Jesus, the leader, wants to establish a loving and trusting relationship with those he chooses, rather than a domineering or overwhelming relationship. Two final points to be made from the Gospel reading. Firstly, that Jesus, like the shepherd, is willing to lay down his life for his flock. Secondly, that Jesus also tends to other flocks. Not simply those that were addressed within the Jewish community. This was important. 
This was something that you probably didn't notice at the time. But there was, it matters. Jesus was willing to create relationships with whoever heard his voice and followed. No matter which flock they belonged to. No matter where they came from. And that one is often lost. That final point is often lost on those who lead different, lead, who lead different denominations. Who make exclusive claims for their approach to be the only way to access God. I say this very conscious of the fact that here we are in the Church of Scotland. And there is a Church of England. And there are a Church of Ireland and a Church of Wales and hundreds of other denominations. We have no exclusive right to God in the Church of Scotland. No more than any other church. We have no greater connection with God than any other group of believers. Jesus remains available for all who want to believe. No matter what their race or ethnicity, their colour, their creed, their gender, their sexuality, their age, their ability or disability, none of these things matter to Jesus. Every time in the church have tried to close ranks and exclude those we disapprove of, Jesus finds a way to be inclusive. To call them by the name and remind all of us that it is He who knows His people, not us. So let's ensure that we do not become a barrier to allowing those who hear Jesus call their name. After all, who are we to judge when only Jesus knows the inner workings of his people? And likewise, each one of us must keep our eyes and ears open for the call of our Master and not be led astray by false prophets or the allure of a world that so often wants to distract us from our purpose. To be a leader like Jesus requires that we inspire love and devotion through our humility and our faith in Him. And we must bow to His wisdom when others come along who have answered His call, but do not look like us or live like us. The Good Shepherd knows His sheep and calls them to Himself. No matter where they come from, no matter which, which fold they belong to, so let us hope and pray that we can always hear his call and respond in faith and love to his voice. Amen. And may God add his blessing to these works. Let's sing again from the hymn book, number 502. Take my life, Lord, let it be. 502.
during the uh, prayers of intercession. When you hear the line, when you hear me say the line, Lord, in your mercy, can you respond, graciously hear us. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Holy Spirit who moves within and among us, around us and ahead, we thank you for the fellowship we have in you. You are the bond between us who breathes into the life of our community, that perfect unity of love that is one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Inspire as we humbly pray, that in the life that we share together as a community of faith, as church people, may know themselves loved as Jesus loves. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. May we be communities of reconciliation, seeking restorative justice, building bridges, making connections, reaching out to others, to the glory of your holy name. Especially we pray for people in challenging places, in countries recovering from earthquake, in places where there is war, in situations where people have been hurt by the actions of others and where relationships are fractured. God of peace, may the love with which the Good Shepherd tends all the flock restore the image of God in us all. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. Gracious God, after whom every family on earth and heaven takes its name. We thank you for deep relationships, for opportunities to give and to receive, to listen and hear what another is saying, to serve one another and celebrate every kindness. And now in moments of silence, we bring to you our thoughts and prayers for those we know, like the disciples, in a need of your love, your care, your compassion, and your blessing. Lord, in your mercy, gracious Jesus. On this, the Sunday before the coronation of King Charles III, we pray for His Majesty the King and for Camilla the Queen Consort. May your spirit be with them as they are affirmed in their responsibilities. Grant them joy and may many be encouraged by their interest and concern. We pray for all whose office and responsibilities affect the lives of many, for those who represent their country's interests, that in all they do they may be mindful of the well-being of every child of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, crucified, risen and ascended, you intercede for us before the throne of God. Thanks be to you. Holy Spirit, you help us to pray in sounds too deep for words. Thanks be to you. Creator of life, you call us to live life anew. Thanks be to you. These prayers we offer to the one in whom we live and move and have our being, to whom be all glory and praise. Amen. Let us close our worship this morning with Hymn 547. What a friend we have in Jesus. 547.
trust to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of this Holy Spirit and blessing the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Ghost, which is amongst you and will remain with you always.